Hey everyone, welcome to the Flutter development series from Roman Just Codes, where I'll be developing beautiful user interfaces with Flutter. And in this video, I'll be diving into nested navigation in Flutter while fleshing out my custom bottom nav bar and the shopping cart implementation from previous videos. In this series, I've been building the UI for a fictional grocery and produce app. And for this episode, I'll be diving into nested navigation in Flutter while also tapping into the existing state management infrastructure in order to complete the shopping cart implementation for this app. This is pretty much what we'll be accomplishing in this video. Users will have the ability to tap into the bottom bar options for the category list, the shopping cart, favorites, and settings, and we'll be using nested navigators for that. We'll be completing the work on the shopping cart where you'll see the items added to the cart here on this list. Let's add a few subcategory items as before. Increment the amount of items per subcategory and add them to the cart. See the number of items showing next to the shopping cart icon. And by tapping on it, you should see the items also on the page. You will see each item, its price based on the amount, and the total price of all items on the cart. We'll be able to remove them individually, as well as the ability to remove them all in one single action. Users can add them again to the list just as easily, and they can do this as many times as they want, and all powered by the services we created using the provider as our default state management strategy. The navigation strategy used here allows you to switch between pages within the main page while still providing the ability to navigate to the top level pages, thus allowing you to roll out your own tab navigation implementation like we did in this video. Let's proceed. We'll be using Navigator 1.0 in Flutter, Stay tuned for future videos on Navigator 2.0. In a nutshell, the way the Navigator 1.0 works in Flutter is just by pushing and popping screens onto the Navigator's stack with either named routes or anonymous routes. Navigator is a widget that manages a stack of route objects. The route is an object managed by the Navigator that represents a screen typically implemented by classes like the material page route. They show on top of each other like a stack. You can access the main app's navigator by using navigator.off, passing the context, and then calling methods like push or push name, depending on your navigation strategy. Right now, we've been pushing screens to the main app's navigator stack, but what if we want to implement a tab navigation? For that, you create a separate nested navigator by adding a new navigator widget inside of one of the pages already pushed into the stack. Each navigator widget must be identified with a unique navigator key. That's how you know which navigator you'll be pushing pages into, by referencing them by their unique key. While the page containing the nested navigator is active, you can navigate to any of the pages managed by that navigator. But once one of the pages managed by the parent navigator gets pushed into the root navigator stack, the whole nested navigation goes away, and you can't get to any of those pages unless you're on the page that contains the nested navigator. This approach is simple enough for our case since we'll be creating a custom tab navigation page with several pages, each of which will maintain their own state. One of them being the shopping cart list, which we'll get to in a minute. Let's start. In the utils.dart, create two unique global keys, each of which will be used to assign it to each navigator. Make them type navigator state. With that in place, let's refactor the category list page, which will make it into two pages. I'll create a new page called mainpage.dart, which I'll create by copying the contents of the category list page. This new page will hold the app bar, category bottom bar, and our new navigator widget. This page will hold the navigator that will manage our new category list, the favorites, the settings, and the shopping cart subpages. We'll make the category list page hold only the header label and the category list, nothing else. Back in our new main page widget, I'll remove the list view and replace it by a navigator widget. This widget will act as a viewport to show all the sub pages we'll create for each of our tabbed options. Let's assign one of our global keys to this navigator, the one called main list nav. By assigning this unique key, we'll be able to reference this navigator from anywhere in the application and push routes and pages into its stack. Every navigator needs an initial route or kind of like a starter page. In our case, we'll set up a route that points to our refactor category list page meaning when this page loads initially and the navigator kicks in, it will show this page by default. Add a handler for this special method called onGenerateRoute, which will trigger every time this navigator detects a route push onto its stack. Upon matching on one of its predefined routes, then it will serve the corresponding page. 
using the settings.name property. Let's create some dummy pages as placeholders so we can prove our point. Create a page for the shopping list page and add some simple structure there. Add another one for the settings, same procedure. And last but not least, one for the favorites. Back on the main page.dart, I'll create a property that will hold the reference to the page that will eventually show through our nested navigator. I'll call it page. Create a switch using as the seed the settings.name property and match on the route fed to this navigator. Depending on the provided named route, return the corresponding page. I'll use the category list page as default as well, just in case. Now, what needs to be returned out of the onGenerate route is a page route, which will wrap the widget to be displayed in the navigator. For this, make use of the page route builder, which takes two parameters, a page builder callback, out of which you should return the corresponding matched widget based on the route provided, and a transition duration, which I'll set to zero seconds since I don't want any animation while switching pages. I'm keeping it super simple. So when pushing routes to this navigator, you reference this key, push the named route, and the one that matches will return the corresponding page widget. Otherwise, the default will kick in. Actually, let me change the initial route to be just the single slash, since anyway, it will land on the category list page if it doesn't match on any other route. With that in place, let's refactor the main app's navigator, which is hidden inside the material app widget. But fortunately, the material app has a property that allows you to set its internal navigator's key via a very conveniently named property called navigator key. Now, in order to push routes to this navigator, you'll reference this unique key that we called main app nav. Let me change this route since the category list page now belongs to the main pages navigator stack as opposed to the roots navigator stack and add the main pages route. Do the proper cleanup and renaming. Import the category list page inside the main page as it is a child widget page now. Actually, from the main page, I don't need this reference to the category selection service, so I'll remove it. Each page will maintain its own state internally. The main page will only manage showing it accordingly. Sweet. I think I'm satisfied with the refactoring so far with this first iteration of the nested navigator. Back in the main.dart, wrap up the importing of the newly created main page.dart. As a recap, remember that when pushing routes into each of the navigators available in this app, you should refer to them by their unique keys and not by using navigator.off like we used to. Now, let's proceed to do some refactoring on our category bottom bar widget since this is the only one that will trigger the pushing of routes into our nested navigator. I'll start by changing some of these icons. The first one will be the list icon. The second one remains the shopping cart. I won't need the location icon here, so I'll replace it by the favorite and I'll leave the settings as is. From the unpressed event on each one of these icons, we'll push their corresponding route. In the case of the list icon, we'll push the category list page route, so we'll use the global key corresponding to the nested navigator key called main list nav, out of which you access the current state property. And then you can push any named routes that belong to that navigator. See how cool it is? By using the unique key assigned to it, I can directly push routes to that navigator in a decoupled fashion. Do the same for all the others. Now, when we push a route using the unique global key reference that points to its corresponding navigator, the onGenerate route gets triggered. The switch logic runs a match for the route provided and returns the corresponding page. Our application still has a lot of references to the navigator.off way of pushing routes and pages to our navigator stack, which we want to keep consistent with the way that we're doing it right now. So let's find and replace all references to this and replace them by their corresponding global key assigned. Import the utils class where needed. And since we changed the old category list page to now be the main page, we need to do also a global replacement of that as well. With all of that refactoring in place, replacing all instances of the category list page for the main page and using the global keys referencing each navigator instead of the navigator.off, we'll do a full reload. 
working flawlessly. And there you go. Using nested navigator widgets to manage a set of subpages is the way to go when it comes to creating tabbed experiences such as this one. You can go out of the nested navigator and tap into the root navigator and back again. With the nested navigation in place, now let's focus on wrapping up the shopping cart experience. Let's start as always by adding a few subcategory items and their amounts to feed it to the cart service. And now you can see the items in the cart icon but not on the shopping list page. Let's change that. Let's go to the shopping list page.dart and start working on its interface. This is what we'll be building here. We'll wrap the whole implementation inside a consumer widget as we want it to listen to every change that occurs in the cart service and rebuild itself accordingly. We'll create a reference to a list of widgets, each of which will represent a cart item. We'll also accumulate all totals to show the total amount. If we indeed have cart items, we'll show a list. Otherwise, we'll show a friendly message prompting users to add items. Okay, so we'll do a for reach on all the cart items retrieved from the cart service. Inside the loop, we'll extract the subcategory information out of the corresponding cart item and accumulate their totals in the main total property. For each cart item, we'll create a container with a light shadow. A row of items centered vertically, containing the subcategory image clipped as a circle, some space in between, and occupying most of the row space, a column of text widgets containing the subcategory name, another text widget containing the amount and price, and another text widget containing the item total, formatted as a price amount. On the far end of the row widget, an icon button for the removal capability, users will be able to remove each item. After accumulating all items in the card items collection, return another column widget that will enclose a single child scroll view inside a container with padding because we want to be able to scroll through the list of items if it gets bigger than the viewport. At the bottom of this column, a container showing a row with our app icon and a text span showing the main total amount accumulated above with all items totals. I realized I can make this into a simple text widget instead of a text span, so you can change this. Now for the else, meaning no items in the cart, we'll show a container, center aligning its children, also a center widget, a message composed of our app icon, a vertical divider using a regular container, and a text widget with a simple message. So again, as a recap, if we have cart items, we'll convert each cart item into a widget structure and add it to our cart items collection. Return a column structure with the list of items that scrolls if it exceeds the viewport with the total at the bottom. Else, just show a friendly message. Let's do a full reload and test. This is the message that shows when there are no items in the cart, what the else clause generates. Now let's proceed to add some items. Add some different subcategories and add amounts to them. Keep track of the amount of items shown in the cart icon in the category bottom bar. Now clicking on the cart icon shows the shopping list page and there they are, the same items that we added with their corresponding information plus the total of all their prices based on the amount selected. For now, we'll leave this structure here as it's only used here, but we could easily extract this into its own widget down the road. Clicking on the remove icon doesn't do anything at the moment. We need to hook it up to the cart service with an event for removing each item. In the services folder, go to the cart service class and let's add a couple of methods. One for removing a cart item out of the list, provided the item to remove, Make sure to add the notify listeners call so when this happens, whoever is listening can rebuild and update itself. One method for removing all items out of the list with the corresponding notify listeners call. And I'll create this special method for fetching the corresponding subcategory out of the cart. If there is a cart item that exists that wraps one of the selected subcategories, we want to access that same reference in the details page in case the user wants to update the existing selected subcategory that is already in the shopping cart. So, find the corresponding subcategory by name and retrieve it, otherwise return the same one, meaning it was not on the cart already. In the selected category page, 
access the card service out of the provider by using the provider that off with the type of service and make sure to provide the listen equals false option as we don't want to rebuild this widget upon changes in the card service. Upon selecting a subcategory, call the card services get category from card to check whether it's been added already, otherwise return the same one. Then proceed to navigate. Now, back in the shopping list page widget, in the icon button to remove the card entry, replace the to do by the card.remove method, passing the existing card item to be removed, that way it removes itself. Now, when we rebuild, you will see this item removes itself, calls notify listeners, triggering a rebuild and the UI updates accordingly. Let's add a few more and test it again. You can remove them in order or randomly, still works. When no items available, we get the friendly message accordingly while the nested navigator still works as before. We'll wrap up this video by adding the capability of removing all items in one single action by leveraging the existing method in the card service called remove all. Back in the shopping list page, I'll create a custom button that matches my design. I'll start by wrapping this text widget inside an expanded widget so it takes up most of the row space. I'll start with a container widget with some padding and a row widget as a child containing a delete icon, some space, and a text widget. I'll use a box decoration to make it have round corners. I'll customize it further by wrapping it inside a material widget, then an inkwell to give it that inkwell effect. I'll have to clip the excess border added by the material widget by using a clip or rect widget. I'll tap into the on tap event from the inkwell, pun intended, in order to leverage the tapping mechanism. See, that's what I meant by clipping the excess border added by the material widget. Fix it by adding border radius to the clip or rect widget. Custom button looking good. Now, let's add some action to it. Import the card service using the provider so we can access the remove all method. And in the untap event, simply call the card services remove all method. Rebuild and let's take it for one final spin. But first, let's add some items to remove. Let's make sure the existing functionality still works. Okay, good. Now, let's test the remove all functionality. Okay, ready? Boom! All items get removed and the friendly message gets shown. Feel free to test it again, but I'm pretty satisfied with the outcome of the shopping cart adding and removing items, as well as our featured widget, the Navigator widget, and how straightforward it is to create our own custom tab navigation strategies. In the next video, we'll then associate added shopping cart items to a logged in user using Firebase Cloud Firestore, instead of doing this locally in memory. And we'll also try to move our category and subcategory information from being hard-coded to also being stored in Cloud Firestore. We'll also flesh out the rest of the pages like the favorites and the settings page widgets, also leveraging Cloud Firestore. So stay tuned for those videos. And with that, thanks for watching. Thank you for the support and see you on the next one. That's it for this video. So please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.